Praise the Lord. Dear Lim Lord, sisters and brothers, once again, Father is here to greet you in the mighty name of Jesus our Savior. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We are in the 26th day of Bible pilgrimage. Hope you are faithfully accompanying uh, reading the word of God in this journey. Also, I hope you are listening to these reflections also. Some days you may be not getting the time. Of course, no worries. When you find time, you listen to. It's all right. But reading the word of God, you should not skip. Hallelujah. Also about listening to these uh, uh, reflections, you need to know one thing. Unless you put on your foot, you are not going to get time for this. You will surely procrastinate. Because with regard to the spiritual matches, it's always like this. You need to put on your foot. That's why the Bible says, strive for holiness without which no one will see God. Strive. That word strive indicates that it's not going to be easy. You need to Put on effort. You need to try. It's very hard. So, uh, beware of this, dear ones. You need to make time. You need to find time. So, for that, you may surely need to skip some other things. Yeah, some worldly matters, watching some other videos or some films or something like that. You need to skip. Also, you need to reduce the time you spend on social media for other purposes like that, for the sake of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, coming to the book of Exodus, we are starting Exodus today. It's a beautiful journey. I promise you, next few days will be very interesting. You will travel with Moses, seeing mighty miracles. Hallelujah, it's a beautiful stuff. So, we knew how Israel ended up in the land of Egypt. There, they are living almost 430 years. In the beginning, life was very easy because of Joseph. Later, we found that now the new kings, they were not having any idea who this Joseph was and what the, he has done to our nation, our people, and so on. So, now the kings, the pharaohs had less regard for the Israelites, so they started oppressing them. Also now, they seeing uh, the Israelites increasing in number, they wanted to reduce the numbers. So, in the first chapter of Exodus, we have the incident of the king of Egypt speaking to two midwives. Their names are Shipra and Pua. Verse 15 of first chapter, what they have done. You know, the king commanded these two midwives to kill the babies, especially the boys of all the Hebrew women, the Israelites. But word of God says the midwives were God-fearing, so they did not obey the king. Instead, they let the boys leave. And they lied to the king in order to save the lives of the children. Verse 20, 21, because the midwives were God-fearing, God was good to them and gave them families of their own. See, St. Augustine speaks about this. Augustine of Hippo, you know, many lies, you know, they spoke a lie. And many lies indeed seem to be for someone's safety or advantage, spoken not in malice, but in kindness. Such was that of those midwives in Exodus who gave a false report to Pharaoh to the end that the infants of the children of Israel might not be slain. But even these are praised not for the fact, but for the disposition shown. 
since those who only lie in this way will attain in time to a freedom from all lie and he continues on the midwives lie by which the deceived pharaoh and kept him from killing the israelite males when they were born the midwives said that hebrew women did not give birth as egyptian women did it's usual to ask whether such lies have been approved by divine authority scripture says that god favored the midwives it is unclear whether god in his mercy pardoned the lie or judged that lie itself deserved a reward for the midwives did one thing by letting the infant boys live and another by lying to pharaoh in letting them live they performed a work of mercy in favor of life pro life but they used that lie for their own ends to keep pharaoh from harming the infants this act could be the occasion not for praise but for pardon because it does not seem to me that the authority to lie has been given to those of whom it is said and a lie has not been found in their mouths that is from uh, the book of revelation chapter 14 verse uh, 5 so st augustine says god forgave the sin because they were pro life because of their compassion they opted for life and god blessed them with the family and the family the blessing in the family their families were blessed that's the meaning hallelujah dear ones importance of being pro life never opt for you know destruction of life because anyone who welcomes a child in my name welcomes me said jesus praise the lord now words 22 the last words of the uh, first chapter of exodus finally the king issued a command to all his people take every newborn hebrew boy and throw him into the nile it was a very brutal law it was in force for few years that's what historians say hallelujah now the water of nile was really an instrument of blessing for the people of egypt so much of progress of the land depend on this water this river called nile but now remember i am bringing back this message from the book of wisdom 1116 that they should know that instrument of sin becomes instrument of punishment or one is punished by the very thing with which one sins later we find that the water of nile became an instrument of destruction and suffering and punishment for pharaoh and egyptians hallelujah now second chapter the birth of moses that beautiful incident but very sad thing uh, but how god is working beautifully there we find that because that brutal law of every young boys the newborn boys of israelites are to be thrown into the water that time he was born when mother could not hide him any longer she took a basket made of reeds and covered it with tar to make it water tight she put the baby in it and then placed it in the tall grass at the edge of the river he was there many hours weeping and weeping crying and crying and he was found out by the daughter of the king and she pulled him out and gave the name moses meaning i pulled him out of what mo in egyptian language is what now moses had a connection with water later we find that he is exercising spiritual authority over water saving many people through the water bringing water from the rock all because you know once you end uh, you go through certain sufferings you get spiritual authority in that area to become an instrument of blessing for many people that is it say so now another thing is that this baby boy who grew up slowly but the authority of the lord was somehow in him god had chosen him and he knew 
in himself that i have a special call i am not supposed to be simply here in the palace enjoying the pleasures of the world his heart was drawn to the people suffering and so we find that he comes out to see his people and uh, in the acts of the apostle saint stephen says it was when he was 40 years old he came out one day to see how his people are the israelites and then the incident of a murder he had to murder an egyptian who had uh, killed a hebrew and seen this moses looked all around when he saw that no one was watching he killed the egyptian and hid his body in the sand so then he had to run away from there to another land called midian that is in ethiopia another kingdom another nation of okay. so he ran to midian about this an ambros of milan says like this moses lived in egypt and became a fugitive from the land of egypt so as to avoid the king of that land but he would not have slain the egyptian if he had not first destroyed in himself if he had not first destroyed in himself the egypt of spiritual wickedness so saint ambrosius he first had destroyed egypt of spiritual wickedness in himself egypt was a place of slavery so much of sinful pleasures they were enjoying and the people there so that particular thing he had destroyed and that is why he could kill a person um who was killing uh, another israelite but this act is in itself is not approved by god and that's why next to 40 long years is paying the price for it in the land of midian taking care of the uh, sheep and uh, what is that uh, and the uh, gods of his father in law jethro jethro was uh, the priest in midian so next to 40 years he would be there i think that is a part of purification from this particular sin that he had committed Saint Augustine says concerning Moses deed when he killed the Egyptian to defend his brother the question is whether his role in that deed was praiseworthy in so far as he admitted his sin uh, and he says just as the richness of the earth you know the earth the richness of the earth even before useful seeds are planted in the earth when you know useful some seeds are not planted before that even if they are it is often praised for a growth of plants even if they are useless so before useful seeds are planted earth will bring out so much of weeds like but that also is praiseworthy uh, even though it is useless he says but or perhaps the deed itself should be justified but to do so that means to say that he killed that man it is okay uh, Uh, St. Augustine says to do so it does not seem right for up to that point Moses had no legitimate authority neither authority that he received from God nor authority ordained by human society but St. Augustine notices but still St. Stephen in the Acts of the Apostles says Moses thought that his brother and understood that God would bring them salvation through him so that by this testimony it appeared that Moses could dare to do this because because he was already called by God to act he was already called by God to act but scripture is silent on this point scripture is silent on this point that means we do not know how Moses knew that he is called already send agustin says scripture is silent on this point but through the inspiration of the holy spirit stephen said in acts of the apostle chapter 7 uh, verse 23 onwards the verse 25 moses thought that his own people would understand that god was going to use him to set them free but they did not understand 
meaning is Moses somehow had an inspiration inside that I am set apart. God will use me. So he waited patiently next to forty long years in the land of Midian, paying price for that particular sin that he committed of killing a person there. Praise the Lord. Let us come to the book of Job. We have today chapter twenty-six. One message I want to give from twenty-six verse twelve. It is his strength that conquered the sea. By his skill, he destroyed the monster rat. So something connected with the water only now. God has destroyed uh, the monster called Raha. What is the meaning of this Raha monster? I was checking the commentaries. Uh, then I found George Leo Haydock. He says the translation should be this: By his wisdom, he has pierced the proud or Egypt. He says. often it is put for egypt the proud of egypt and he says all would naturally have concluded that the fall of pharaoh was pointed at if it had not been supposed that job lived before that event that is how our job is that's the first thing but others say quoting job 9:13 again that this Monster Rahab is a legendary sea monster, which represented the forces of chaos and evil. Same thing we can read in Psalm eighteen and ten: "The Lord, you have crushed the monster Rahab." So, sea has an evil in it that has been the belief from the beginning. that is more clear when we read revelation chapter 13 words 1 book of revelation then i saw a beast coming up out of the sea it had 10 horns and 7 heads on each of its horns there was a crown see we will later come to know about that when we read that book but the thing is i want you to know it's an evil of chaos also pride and connected with water somehow the lord has authority to destroy this evil and a spiritual authority now is given to moses we will find later in the book of exodus how this authority will be exercised over the sea and the powers of darkness ruling the sea praise the lord Now let us come to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter twenty-six. The chapter twenty-six brings a lot of beautiful messages. Though we will not be able to go through everything, but I hope you have read it. And now we shall just uh, go through few incidents. First is the anointing at Bethany. Where it was? Bethany. Remember the place Bethany uh, in Hebrew. The name Bethany is. house of welcome or welcome home like you know that is the meaning bethany the word bethany in hebrew so there jesus was in bethany in the house of simon a man who had suffered from a dreaded skin disease simon the leper nowadays we all keep social distancing slowly people are afraid of each other looking with lot of suspicion and a uh, lot of doubt and a kind of fear is there with the people who are in quarantine or who have this uh, covid-19 infection and so on but the fear and the new tension should be taken away from our heart and the lord is going to this man's house st john chrysostom says i read it from uh, his homily It may seem that this woman is the same in all the gospel narratives, but I doubt it. Who? Oh, John the Sost. In John, she is another person, one much to be admired, the sister of Lazarus. But not without purpose did the evangelist mention the leprosy of Simon here. He did this 
in order to show in order to show how the woman gained the confidence and came to jesus leprosy seemed a most unclean disease and to be abhorred yet she saw that jesus had both healed the man and had gone into his house this is why he remained with the leper she grew confident that he could also easily wipe away the uncleanness from her soul the leprosy of my soul she thought it is significant that the city is named bethany that we might learn that it is of his own free will that he comes to suffer he is welcoming suffering by himself it's not forced on himself if before he was fleeing from their envy now he comes near within about 15 furlongs from jerusalem dear ones it's a beautiful step now the lord is taking just before he is entering into his passion and his death in the house of the simon the leper he is accepting this anointing by a lady hallelujah and it shows how the lord is welcoming everyone to himself and he wants to take away all the negativity in our heart regarding people and the fear in our heart regarding some sickness and some doubts and uh, apprehension in our heart regarding certain type of people jesus is for everyone and he welcomes everyone and he gives the same spiritual authority to us to hallelujah now we have the beautiful description of the last supper the lord's supper in more detail about eucharist we will learn by the time we come back again into the gospels because by that time we will know what is the old testament uh, uh last is our old testament the passover and all these things having that background it will be easy to understand the full meaning of the eucharist when we come next time but now i want to give another important meaning of eucharist here verse 26 onwards while they were eating jesus took a piece of bread gave a prayer of thanks and broke it and gave to the disciples take and eat this is my body see he took bread in his hand and we know he is taking his body which is going to be broken in few hours see can you imagine what is the mindset of jesus when he was at the table the last supper time jesus knew that his time had come it was not by chance that you know all of a sudden people arrested him and he was prosecuted and crucified no he as now we have just seen he was entering into jerusalem to be persecuted not that he went to jerusalem and by chance he was caught and killed no he knew what was going to happen he knew what judas is going to do he knew what peter is going to do peter will deny he knew it he knew all the disciples are going to leave him he knew what pontius pilate will do he knew the excruciating pain that he is going to suffer he knew that even father will be silent there no one will be intervening in this matter jesus knew of the the death that he had to suffer so that was the mindset of jesus okay but he knew one thing also john chapter 13 verse 1 2 3 speaks about that okay he knew i have come from the father and i am going to the father father has interested me everything he knew that i have this mission i have to receive this and so he took bread in his hand that bread is his body which is going to be broken the sufferings that he is going to endure in his body okay that is the bread he took it in his hand and what did he give he gave prayer of thanks you know what is the meaning of eucharist from the word eucharistia meaning thanksgiving 
So, what is this thanksgiving? When taking the body, the pain in the body, or the excruciating suffering that he is going to undergo, it's already there. He sees it and he takes it and he gives thanks. Thanksgiving in the midst of suffering is called Eucharist. Hallelujah. Now, he took a cup, gave thanks to God and gave to them, drink it, all of you. This is my blood. After this last supper, he is going to the, the garden of Gethsemane there, he is going to sweat blood. The mental agony, excruciating pain in the mind, seeing the sinfulness of his people, when he was really in need of the support and presence uh, of his disciples, they were sleeping. And that is a symbol. He came to his own people, his own people disowned him. So the, the sinfulness of the people whom he loved, it became the mental agony to the point of sweating blood. You know, physical sickness, very often we can bear. But what we most of the time cannot bear is the, the mental agony, the sinfulness of other people, the shortcomings of my own people, the mental agony that those people who are dear to me, they give to me because of their living standard or the words they speak or the actions of them bringing pain. That is this the blood. He took it in his hand and he gave thanks. Thanksgiving in the midst of suffering is Eucharist. And he is inviting us to give thanks. And then it changes. It becomes salvific. Any suffering, if you accept with thanksgiving for the glory of God, will become salvific, will bring salvation of people deliverance from bondages for other people. 2 Corinthians 7 10, sorrows that are used by the Lord will bring salvation, no person of regret in it. That is why the Lord is inviting us for Eucharist. Hallelujah. Now let us see the arrest of Jesus. Uh, verse 51, one of those who were with Jesus drew his sword and struck at the high priest's slave, cutting off his ear. We know it is Peter, but Matthew doesn't want to name Peter. So one of those who were with Jesus. And Jesus said, put your sword back in its place. All who take the sword will die by the sword. You know what is the meaning? Instrument of sin becomes instrument of punishment. That's what Jesus is teaching. Yeah. Don't you know that I could call on my father for help and at once he would send me more than 12 armies of angels if I asked father save me now. If I say he would send angels many armies they will come. But in that case how could the scripture come true which say that this is what must happen? How will the scriptures be fulfilled. If I resist suffering, if I ask for somebody's help, even, even armies of heaven will come for my help. But if I do so, how will the scriptures be accomplished for me? Dear ones, there is a message. When some sufferings come on our way, if you resist, if you take your sword, means if you think of retaliate, the, the spirit of revenge, if you entertain, if you get angry, if you shout at them, if you bring back evil for the evil that they give to you, how will the scriptures be fulfilled for you? Scriptures will not be accomplished for you. Will of God for you will not be accomplished. That which is in the heart of the Lord, that which is written for you in the Bible will not be accomplished for you if you resist uh, the suffering this way. The importance of uh, trusting the Father and accepting the sufferings joyfully for the glory of God so that the scriptures be accomplished in our lives. Amen. Concluding 
the reflections for today Matthew 26 last sentence just then a rooster crowed Peter remembered what Jesus had told him he went out and wept bitterly hallelujah the message is clear lord can speak to us through the incidents of our lives small small incidents also he can use for that matter any creature in the world some incidents that happen on our way or some dreams or some words of some people something that happens casually for others may not be casual casual for you it may be very significant for the world many things are casual but for a chosen person no the lord will speak through those incidents in our lives if you are open to the lord if you are prone to the inspirations of the holy spirit he will use every incident in our life for a spiritual reawakening and that love that we had lost god wants to keep back to us and he will always use different ways and means to get us back let us be open to the lord let us keep our eyes and our ears open to the incidents to the things to the people who are close to our lives let the lord speak and change our heart and make us his own by the authority of christ to today I bless you now always and forever amen